Adam Sherry with me, Chris Goodrun. Right, okay, so back to whiskey this week, um, after a couple of weeks of, uh, of doing gin, I think it's time to, uh, to get back to doing some whiskey tasting, so I know you guys uh, prefer the whiskey tasting episode, so um, this particular tasting has been one that I've wanted to do for quite some time, and um, obviously only just recently received uh, the samples of the new bottlings of Black Knock. Um, obviously, as you well know, Bladnock has had its uh, trials and tribulations uh, over the last uh, handful of years, ever since uh, uh, sort of 2014, when uh, uh, unfortunately the uh, the distillery was uh, in the hands of the receivers after um, Raymond's uh, building company went into uh, to, to liquidation. And I've mentioned it in the past, and uh, you know, I think the thing that why Bladnock had such a sort of like strong following it was the was the fact that you could you know you you could talk, talk to Raymond and he'd quite happily talk the hind legs off a donkey and there was you you felt like you had a, a relationship with with Raymond and the distillery and you we went through the trials and tribulations of you know uh, the distillery getting up and running from when he bought it in 1994 and uh, you know you. When you bought a bottle of Bladnock, you know you felt like you were obviously contributing to um, the distillery itself. It wasn't owned by some faceless company, and uh, and I guess it's probably made it all the more sad that uh, what happened in in, in the end. And um, um, I'm hoping that uh, obviously Raymond got a, got a good settlement from the uh, from the sale of the distillery, put his money worries behind. I know he's still active in bottling casks and uh, things like that so uh, obviously really wish him well with regards to that but today we're looking at the the, the new bottlings I, I I don't want to use the word rebirth I mean the, the distillery was eventually bought by a, an Australian guy called David Pryor back in 2015 and he said a few sort of crass things I think in, in in the media which I thought were a little bit disrespectful waffling on about how he rescued the still, distillery and all that kind of stuff and well frankly if it hadn't been for Raymond's hard work in the beginning there wouldn't be a bloody distillery to rescue anyway you know so thankfully he's kind of not really said an awful lot else since then um, and like I said I just felt it was a, a little bit disrespectful but on, but anyway you know these things happen distilleries continue they change hands and uh, all that kind of stuff as you uh, as you well know and uh, I suppose um, David has, uh, has kind of done the right thing by sort of getting in somebody with uh, serious industry know-how, a chap called Ian McMillan, who was the uh, master distiller and blender uh, at Burns Stewart, and he'll be looking after the, the bottlings and the selection of casks and all that kind of stuff. And, and so we've got you know, the three new releases here, and I thought, let's see if I've got a few samples ligging around. I mean, there's not been a huge amount of uh, privately bottled Bladnock um, over the sort of last handful of years. Um, and uh, I managed to dig out three, three interesting samples, one which was obviously the distillery bottling itself. Um, so I think this is going to be quite, uh, quite an interesting tasting. So uh, I guess there's not really an awful lot left to say apart from let's have a look at today's uh, today's song. It was easy, it was pretty, everything was nice, you took care of it. Right, we're going to kick off with one of the, the trio of new bottlings. This is called the Samsara. It has no age statement. Uh, it is bottled at 46.7. Now, according to the, the blurb, the whiskies going into this bottle are a minimum of eight years old and possibly a little bit older as well. And um, they were aged in a combination of uh, ex bourbon and ex Californian red wine casks. So, could be interesting, a little bit something a little bit different. Um, I don't believe that, uh, that Raymond. Um, Ever played around with uh, with wine casks? I know we obviously did the peated stuff, uh, which obviously we'll get to right at the very end. Um, and uh, apparently, samsara. I don't know what language it is, but apparently means rebirth. So anyway, then we're going to move on to the second of the new Bagnock bottlings, the 15-year-old Adela. And now Adela apparently means noble, and this is uh, been aged in um, Oloroso casks, uh, both American and uh, Spanish Oloroso casks, uh, for obviously 15 years, and again bottled at 46.7%. So, um, 
Well, yeah, I know that uh, that Raymond built up a reasonable amount of stock while he was uh, in, you know, had uh, in, in charge of Bladnock. So, uh, uh, and he'd bought some really nice sherry Bladnocks over the past. So, no reason to believe that that's not going to follow suit. Then we're going to look at the first of the uh, privately bottled um, bottlings. Uh, this is uh, a 18 year old bottled by uh, the then Douglas Lang in their old malt cask range. Uh, it was uh, distilled in November of 1992, uh, bottled in October of 2011 at 50% and the cask reference was DL7162. Next bottling we'll be looking at, although it's only <laughs> a dribble left uh, is in the McKillop's Choice range. Now this was all aged in American oak, distilled in 1991, bottled in April of 2014 at 45.7%, uh, thus making it 22 years old, and the cask number was 304603, so um, never really tasted a bad bottling uh, from Lawn McKillop, so I'm guessing that's not going to change. So. Then we're going to look at the final bottling, uh, new bottling from Bladnock. This is the Talia, uh, which apparently means Dew from God. Now this is a 25 year old and uh, I don't re ever remember um, Raymond releasing anything quite that old. I think the oldest uh, Raymond released was a 22 year old, but this, so this should be interesting. Uh, it's bottled at 90, 40, 92, 49.2% and um, initially the spirit was aged in a combination of ex-bourbon, ex-sherry and ex-whiskey casks. What's an ex-whiskey cask? I don't know, never heard of that particular tree before, the, 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 uh, the fabled whiskey tree. Uh, so I'm guessing probably refilled American oak and it was finished in brand new oak. Now I must admit, whenever I sort of see an old whiskey finished in brand new casks, the, the initial reaction, rightly or wrongly, is, hmm, probably no oak character. We're trying to get some oak character into this uh, into this spirit. Um, I'm hoping that's obviously not the case here, because sometimes, obviously, uh, it can the oak can be a little bit forced, it's almost like recharring old casks, you know, the, it doesn't really feel particularly natural, but uh, uh, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see when we get there to taste it. And finally, I managed to uh, dig out this real sample of uh, the Lightly Peated that uh, Raymond created. Uh, this was distilled in 2001 and bottled in uh, 2012, and actually a 10 year old. Um, so, but probably should have been 11, I guess, but anyway, um, could have been bottled in 2011, but I've got it written down as 2012. But, so this was bottled at 53.5, and I always thought that, uh, that the lightly peated bottlings that Raymond produced were really, really good. So, uh, I don't think I've reviewed this particular bottling in either of the previous two uh, episodes of the show that I've done on Bladnock way back when, so um, yeah, hopefully this will be really interesting and uh, I'm certainly looking forward to sharing the uh, the new releases with you, so um, let's uh, let's make a start with the Samsara then. I know you were my big mistake, walking in a fucking Okay, so let's have a look at the Samsara, let's, let's see what the nose gives us then, shall we? Lovely American oak, quite Dusty and tannic. I guess the tannins are also kind of coming from the um, uh, the the the, rock, the wine cask. There is a slight sort of winey red fruit note just sitting in the background, but it has that kind of um, full barleyed, elegant character of uh, um, sort of more modern day uh, Bladnock. I mean, I remember sort of Bladnock from years gone by having a very light, typical lowlandy style but that was going back to the days when um when it was triple distilled but uh yeah it's got some lovely elegance um like i said plenty of barley it's fresh there's a little seam of citrus running through it the wine cask isn't too heavy it's just adding that little bit of of winey red fruits just in the background so yeah this is actually a really pleasant no age statement whiskey now i know a lot of people have issues about no age statements, but at the end of the day, like I keep saying, you just have to put your prejudices aside and just taste it. If it's if it's good, then I've got no issue. Don't have an issue with age statements or the lack thereof, shall we say. Anyway, let's, let's see what the power gives us.
a little woody on the finish. I get some lovely cherry fruits and stone fruits and spice coming through on the finish. But it opens up with the sort of like the, the full barley character, a little bit of, of vanilla oak, um, really quite dense, very, very long. I mean, it's got a lovely progression through um, the American oak aged spirit and then the, uh, um, the wine cask spirit kind of coming through on the finish. And, mm, vibrant, lovely, uh, juicy. Uh, that is a lovely whiskey. That's a really nice starter, I think. So, um, mm. yeah, first of the three bot new bottlings gets a, gets a big thumbs up, as they say. For me. Okay, so after that, let's uh, move on to the um, Adela. Let's see what the nose gives us on this thing, shall we? Well, obvious all Rosso straight off the bat. Um, not too heavy in actual fact. It's got that sort of underlying vanilla character which I tend to find in uh, ex-American um, oak sherry casks. Nicely balanced. I'm certainly getting some barley character. I mean, some of uh, I remember some of um, Raymond's um, sherry cask releases were aged in uh, sort of first fill Oloroso and were a bit heavy on the sherry, shall we say. Um, so this is certainly more more to my liking. I think it's got some lovely balance to it. Again, I'm getting the the the, the Bladnock sort of barley sort of spirit character. There's a little bit of citrus. The sherry isn't too heavy. It's just kind of nicely balancing, adding a little bit of dried fruit, a little bit of coffee tannin. Yeah, quite quite citrusy dried fruit in actual fact. Sort of slight sort of. Maybe sort of tangerine, a little bit of lime, possibly. But all the while, it's definitely got that sort of rich, full barleyed character, which is, uh, like I said, sort of indicative of the more sort of modern style of, uh, of Bladnock. So, so yeah, this is this is a good nose, quite quite impressive. Let's uh, see if the palate is too. Plenty of, of American oak vanillins, that sort of soft vanilla character. A little bit of grippy, um, almost kind of cinnamony sort of uh, tannin. A little bit of dried fruit kind of coming through on the finish. The alcohol is obviously making it a little bit drying on the finish and kind of emphasising the, the more tannic uh, aspects of the cask. But quite juicy, again plenty of barley, not too heavy on the sherry, you know, all quite pleasantly balanced I think. So uh, so yeah, I think yet another impressive whiskey. So, and, and why should one be surprised? I mean, um, I mean there were obviously some, should we say, dodgy batches that, um, that Raymond picked up over the years, but certainly uh, the stuff that Raymond was distilling, although obviously um, whether all of this comes from that period of time or not, I couldn't honestly say. But uh, I mean, certainly in the in the the, the sort of last five years of, of of the distillery's life, you know, the the, the um, I wouldn't say it was kind of mothball, but I mean, you know, there were periods where sort of Raymond struggled to sort of get some stuff distilled, cost of of, of barley going up and things like that. And as we know, with sort of any particular business, there's always going to be sort of highs and lows and um, always going to be a bit of tightness with the cash flow, as they say. But uh, um, I suppose, with hindsight, you could say that maybe you know, back in two thousand and ten, two thousand and eleven, the writing certainly was 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 possibly on the wall. But uh, uh, anyway, um, that's that's neither here nor there. And uh, so coming back to the um, uh, the Adela, I think uh, again a, a lovely whiskey, really nice. Paranoid composition for kissing you will enter in my head. Right, okay, so let's move on to the uh, Old Malt Cask 18. Now this, I think, was from memory sherry finished rather than being uh, wholly aged in uh, in ex-sherry cask. So let's see uh, what the nose gives us then, shall we? 
a little bit more sherry character. It's got a little bit more sort of pruney, winey, raisinated fruit, but that, that raisinated fruit's got a lovely perfumed element to it. Again, plenty of barley underneath. Um, a little bit of talk tannin, touch of coffee, sort of mockery kind of coffee rather than sort of um, black coffee. Um, again, fragrant, aromatic, um, has a, an almost old schooly blad knot kind of character to it. That's a slightly more higher toned sort of uh, characteristic, but again, plenty of barley, good. Good sherry notes, no no sulphur, no no off notes. Yeah, really, really well balanced. Let's see what the palette gives. A lot more sherry on the on the um, on the palate. A lot more of that pruny, winey, raisinated fruits. A little bit of citrus. A lot of tannin. Um, kind of dust, both dusty and sort of tight, um, spicy tannins. Uh, coffee, uh, treacle, walnuts, that kind of thing. Not quite so much of the barley character. Lovely length. Um, lovely spicy, you know, tongue tingling finish. Um, yeah, that's 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 a good cherry cask. I mean, you know, it's probably not as interesting on the palate as the nose, um, but certainly it's got character, it's got length. There's no off notes, um, and um, yeah, that's again not not a bad whiskey at all. So let's move on to the 22 year old McKillop's choice. Let's see what the nose gives us on the scent, shall we? Oh, now that is a lovely nose. Um, elegant, delicate, white fruits, slightly creamy oak, a little bit of almost kind of herbal rye like notes, a touch of baked fruit, earth. Even a slight manure kind of note as well, which is um, unusual. But, uh, I mean, that, that's the wonderful thing about Bladnock is that it, sometimes it never really showed its age. I mean, yes, some of the older bottlings that Raymond released had that kind of damp straw kind of uh, character, um, which is how it used to go. But certainly, this is just wonderfully fresh and citric. Some lovely, almost custard powder vanilla. Um, mm, dusty and mature, but still vibrant and fresh and citric and almost, almost minerally, but not quite minerally, if you sort of see where I'm getting at. There's a little bit of almost violet note kind of coming through. Touch of, of lime. That's some lovely dusty barley. That is a gorgeous nose. I mean, I remember, I remember stocking this, and um, it wasn't a cheap bottling back then. And, um, but yeah, no, I say back then it was only three years ago. Um, but oh, this is a fabulous, fabulous black knob. Let's, let's see what the palette gives us. Fabulous kind of mature, violety, oaky kind of carrot finish. Um, still, yeah, there's a, a fair degree of oak. That sort of creamy, sort of mature, not sawdusty in actual fact, which is quite quite a surprise. Um, wonderfully balanced, elegant, delicate, um, barley, white fruits, a um, little bit of spice, and like I said, really violety on the finish. Um, which is not something I've often come across in uh, in Bladnock, it has to be said. Um, slight herbal note, quite drying right on the aftertaste, but um, fabulous balance and complexity. I mean, that just keeps going on and on and on. I mean, that was a stunning cask, it has to be said. Um, 
mm, a little bit of white chocolate as well. Uh, I'm getting now on the aftertaste. Oh, oh, that was damn. Right, okay, so let's move on to the final of the three new bottlings. This is the Talia, and like I said, 25 years old, um, matured in several different casks, including whiskey casks, um, and finished in new oak. Let's, uh, let's see what the nose gives us on the scent, shall we? Woo, big chunk of spicy, fresh oak. Whoa, loads and loads of tangerine, marmalade. Now that's got some of that kind of classic slightly straw-like mature black knocky kind of notes. Do you know, I, I, I kind of wonder what, I mean, the oak doesn't feel forced. There is a lot of new oak character there and I wonder whether that was really, really necessary because if you kind of like just ignore that kind of, you know, um, fairly sort of robust and oaky kind of um, character. You can smell some mature sawdusty oak, a little bit of a little bit of spicy f dried fruits, barley, cream. I just wonder whether it really needed it. I mean yes it's it's instantaneous um, and very very kind of um, oaky <laughs> for, for want of a better word. Um, and it's 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 impressive in that kind of um, aspect, but like I said, I wonder whether it really needed it. But and I to to a to a certain degree, that kind of big fresh virgin oak does kind of get in the way slightly. I mean, you have to kind of work at sort of ignoring it. But you know, once you've kind of got beneath that, you realise there's some some lovely mature spirit, um, some mature oak, American oak. The sherry is very, very subtle, it has to be said. Um, but you just get a smidgen of dried fruit and a little bit of walnutty spice and warm spice. But, yeah, I mean, if you let it sit in the glass, the oak does kind of sort of settle down, shall we say. Um, and this is not a cheap bottling, it has to be said, but it's still, yeah, a very, very good whiskey. And it just... Like I said, it just goes to show that the spirit that Bladnock was producing way back when, um, and you know, throughout the sort of the Raymond Armstrong um, era, shall we say, is uh, was exceptionally good. Oh, oak. Anyway, let's uh, see what the palate gives us. Mmm, God, that's got a bit of a spicy finish. Kind of kicks off with that sort of tall, vanilla -y, spicy, big, juicy oak. And then on the middle you start to get the slightly more mature sort of American oak character, the slight sawdusty note, um, a little bit of straw, a little bit of white fruit, barley. Um, and then on the finish I'm getting the, the, the sherry notes, the dried fruits, the walnut, the um, raisins, the sultanas, a little bit of chocolate and coffee um, and, and, and tannins. Really chewy, big and I mean that's obviously going to you know, be emphasised by, by the new oak giving it that kind of real body and intensity. Um, and, and again I just kind of feel that did it really need that sort of new oak finishing? I think the spirit was certainly good enough to stand on its own two feet. It certainly wasn't sort of lacking in oak character because if you ignore all that new oak character you can certainly taste some sherry notes, gentle sherry notes and some lovely mature American oak. Um, I think they, maybe they were trying to make it a little bit flashy. I mean certainly, I mean I like the new packaging. The new packaging is 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 very, very different from the Raymond era packaging, which is what they've attempted to do. They're a different bottle shape, different labelling, um, and it is very, it is classy. I, I, I've got no issue with 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 the uh, the new labelling. 
and they've attempted to make a very kind of flashy, classy uh, 25 year old and yeah, I'm, yeah, I like it, it's good, it's not a bad whiskey, I'm, I just keep coming back to the, the, the school of thought that did it really need that new oak finishing. Um, I mean it's different, you know, I mean I can't, I can't say it isn't different and I certainly can't, com can't sort of say that it's a, it's a bad whiskey that um, certainly um, Ian McMillan has, has chosen some great casks for this particular bottling. Um, I, I just personally would have liked to have seen it without all that sort of virgin oak but you know, anyway, there it is uh, and certainly, um, certainly a good, good, good whiskey so, um, hmm. Let me be in peace without you. And finally, let's have a bit of pee. I mean, you know, I don't think a, a black knock tasting would be a black knock tasting without at least something from uh, the, the, the Raymond era um, bottled by uh, by himself. So um, anyway, let's uh, let's see what those give us on this show. Softly peated. Um, Loads and loads of barley character, but that peat is slightly kind of salty, slightly herbal. Not briny, but quite phenolic in actual fact. Um, a little bit of tar kind of coming through. But it works really well. It's kind of got a sort of an un unsalted colila kind of feel to it. I mean, as we know, sort of Colila over the years has become more oilier and richer. It doesn't quite have the oiliness, but it has the, the dense richness of, of character um, that Colila kind of has uh, at the moment. But again, it's got a, a lovely elegance. And, you know, I love these kind of quirky little whiskies. You know, I love sort of whiskies that sort of you ordinarily think shouldn't be peated, but actually are. And... Um, and I think the thing is that sort of Raymond kind of got the peating level pretty much about right with this. Um, and I, I, I still think that sort of about 10 years old was, was kind of the right age for, for, for Bladnock. I tasted some, some younger stuff, you know, um, eight and nine years old. And I, I still think that kind of like 10, 10 to sort of like, you know, 18 was just sort of like the, the kind of a point point of, uh, of Black Knox maturation. Um, some of the older ones did seem pretty old, you know, and uh, you, you kind of have to like that kind of old strawy kind of character, but um, this is just fabulous. I mean, really vibrant. Mm. Let's see what the palette gives us. quite heavily peated actually on the finish. I mean, some of the bottlings that Raymond produces lightly peated I think were probably um well you know using the word light in it's a very very unapt sort of terminology because this has actually got quite a fair degree of peat in actual fact. Certainly on the finish it's quite tarry and not medicinal dry um herbal and quite sweet in actual fact. Got a lovely sort of sweet kind of um, almost kind of um, scrubby, her herbally kind of peak going on. Um, no real salt, so I'm guessing this is probably mainland peat uh, that was used in the peating of this barley. Um, but again, the, f the, 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 the spirit itself has got a lovely fruity kind of character, barley, sort of a little bit of tangerine, a little bit of white fruit, a little bit of spice. Um, and then that kind of peak kicks in right on the finish with that sort of real phenolic, tarry intensity and mm, really, really good, really impressive spirit has to be said. And I mean, I imagine there's still some casks of this knocking around at the distillery, so what, hopefully one of these days, um, you know, uh, the distillery will sort of you know, re-release a peated, peated whiskey, but for now, hmm. If you've still got a bottle of this or an unopened bottle or something like that, then oh, mm, absolutely gorgeous stuff. My soul until the end, until right, okay, so that's some of today's episode of the show. Well, 
it's nice to see Blad not back. It has to be said. I mean, um, although I don't kind of quite have the sort of connection, I suppose we say like uh, Brocladdy. Uh, I, I, I've always been a, a big fan of Bladnock and um, you know always been a big fan of uh, what Raymond was uh, was doing with the distillery. And it's nice to see the distillery back. It's nice to see. It's yeah, and, and, and I think the thing is that sort of uh, you know I was reading some stuff. Um, and Raymond was really magnanimous about the whole the whole thing, you know. Um, at the end of the day, you know, he wanted what was right and, and good for the distillery. And, you know, this chap, you know, David Pryor has come along. He's got, got obviously got a big, big wedge of cash to invest in the distillery. And, uh, um, you know, that's, that's, that's a good thing, you know, it needed needed some money being put into it um, I mean obviously it wasn't in the state of say some of the other distilleries in the late 80s but um, it's nice to see Blad not back that's all I can say and so the, um, the Samsara to be honest with you I, I really think this is probably the best of the three whiskies from a personal point of view um, it's obviously the cheapest of the three bottlings and, uh, and certainly it's a lovely vatting it's got a little bit of maturity it's got um, a nice judicious use of, of the wine cask so you know just really nice whiskey um, the Adela yeah okay I can I can live with that it's a, a pleasant um, not too sherried uh, quite well balanced um, so yeah I think if you like sort of sherried whiskies you like sherried bad knock certainly not a bad one to, to, to go for um, the Douglas Lang old malt cask again you know, good spirit, um, a little bit heavy on the sherry on the palate for my personal taste, but um, again, that was not, not a bad bottling. Standout bottling has to be the McKillop choice, just everything I love about sort of um, old Bladnock. It still had that vibrancy um, and that sort of dusty American oak and you know it's just absolutely gorgeous and really violety like I said you know, not a characteristic that one would normally sort of associate with the distillery and um, the Talia well yeah like I said I mean it's an impressive whiskey you stick your nose in the glass you get lots of that sort of oaky kind of character um, and there's a lot of people that love that kind of stuff. For me personally, I don't think that that new oak finishing was really, really necessary, but there it is, there you have it. It's, you know, whiskey's all about experimentation, and um, I mean, it's not like it doesn't work at all, like I said to you. It's, it's kind of, uh, if you like that type of whiskey, you're going to love it. It is a very, very flashy, classy kind of whiskey. Um, I just... Like I said, I just keep thinking that it wasn't really, really necessary, but there you have it, it's there. Um, and the Lightly Peated, obviously uh, no longer available, as are the other two independent bottlings. You, you might actually pick them up at auction or something like that, but uh, um, yeah, really, really good. Like I said, loved the fact that sort of Raymond sort of attempted to play around with some peat, did some, some interesting stuff with it, and you know, Again, like a lot of distilleries, didn't go OTT on the peat. Just sort of like, just enough peaty kind of character to sort of, you know, add some sort of um, peat notes, but not swamp the, uh, the the character of the whiskey. So, um, so yeah, another another lovely black knock bottling. So this, so there you go. I mean, you know, I think. Uh, like I said, it's it's lovely to see the the distillery back and up and running, and it's lovely to know that a lot of the s staff have been retained. And uh, you know, I, I can imagine that sort of during the period of time it was in the hands of the receiver, there was a lot of uncertainty. There was probably a lot of a lot of official people wandering around with clipboards doing inventories and all this kind of stuff. So I can imagine it was a, a pretty stressful time. But um, anyway, it's lovely to see the distillery back. It's lovely to sort of, um, you know, have uh, the opportunity to taste uh, Black Knock once again. So um, do yourself a favour and go and buy some. That's all I can say. So uh, anyway, good dramming and good afternoon.